This Thursday morning, Brian Brangbird, that will be Professor Brian Brangbird. What do you make of this claim of fiscal hmm. responsibility, Brian? I would say borrow a phrase from the who, don't get fooled again. There is no fiscal responsibility in this plan. Wait a second. David Barnson with us this morning. None of, the, none of these tax increases get through? None at all? Not a single one. First of all, Why? the House obviously isn't going to vote for any of it. But even the Senate wouldn't vote for it. Even you, are, Cinema you and sure Nation. Of this? I'm 100% sure. The 100%. Senate won't go for taxing the rich? They had a Democrat majority in the House <laughs> and couldn't pass Build Back Better. Now the Republicans have a majority in the House, they would be taking people out on stretchers if they voted for this. None of it's going to happen. But as Warren said, it's a campaign speech. Yeah. And it's an important okay. one because it sets his priority. And I'm worried about this Medicare side because now the Republicans are talking about how, oh, we can't touch Medicare. We shouldn't do anything to reform Medicare. President Trump's trying to hit Governor DeSantis over that. President Biden's looking to make an issue about Medicare. The fact that these kind of tax increases have been proposed uh, you, now, OK, you say none of them go through, but if some of them go through, what happens to the market? Uh, again, if they were or, to go economy, through, if it were to go through, it'd be a problem. By the way, it's worse than we even showed because that capital gain increase for billionaires oh, yeah. is on unrealized gains. Yeah, that's a wealth, they, tax. They, they, yeah, it's it's a wealth, wealth tax by that's disguise. taking your money before yeah. you've made the profit. It's not serious at all. It's a campaign speech. And I'm not exaggerating. None of it there, will go through. Yeah. There's also talk that it's not just on billionaires. It's on rich people of their wealth of $100 million or more, which is quite a step away from a billion dollars. That's correct. Let me go back to this uh, that marginal tax rate. You're telling me that if you live and work in New York City, you'll pay New York City tax, state tax, federal tax, and it'll all go up, and your marginal rate will be 59%. Yeah. Why on earth would anybody work yeah, and can, live in New York City? Can you imagine someone living in California? Can you, 58 in California. Yeah, can you imagine yeah. someone living in both New York and California? Well, how, <laughs> dumb, how dumb must they be? <laughs> <That's you. laughs> There's room in my house in New Jersey, but it won't do you much good. Right. That's, that's a fact. Right. Okay, let's move on. All right, Brian, is this the uh, basement strategy? That's I, gonna I, be renewed. I love that definition of always working. I, I'm going to use that in my life. Wherever I am, I'm always working. Here's the problem for the president, okay? Politicians are supposed to be public figures. They're supposed to be out in front when we have problems. It is. It's interesting seeing these uh, politicians that are injured right now and, and are elderly in a hospital and so forth, and we're about to nominate two 80-year-olds to run for president. Perhaps that may be some of the issue, that President Biden would be better off being in Walter Reed hanging out than what he's doing, just sort of hiding. I mean, this whole thing is so absurd in a country of ours that we can't find candidates that have the health and stamina to to get out and lead from the front to do their job, as Brian's talking about. He, President Biden should be out on site at these locations. But if it's DeSantis versus Newsom, that changes the equation. Well, that's a lot of youth. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of youth. <laughs> that's right maybe there. a little too much energy, uh, at least on one side of that equation. Yeah. <laughs> I get nervous about Newsom leaving California. Stay right there, sir. The rollback of the D.C. crime bill, that's really a legislative win for Republicans. David, the Republicans have a majority of what? Is it two in the House? That's a lot. No, it's a bigger than that, but it isn't huge. And it, they've and got to keep absolute discipline if they, they want to roll back what's in this budget. They do. And then I think even on the Senate side that there are two Democrats. Well, now Christian Cinema registered independent. Yep. So you have independent and a moderate Democrat that help in the Senate. But the House is really where you're holding it in line and you have to wait till the next term. I think you're delivering very good news to our viewers who are in the economy and in the market. Yep. Because if you can roll back all of these tax increases, if you can really stop all of that, that's a huge plus, for, in my opinion, for the entire country. And I just want to point out, Stuart, I'm not just saying that there's no way these are going anywhere. I'm saying this now with the gift of a Republican majority in the House. But I said this about Build Back Better. When they had a majority, but I never believed that Manchin and Sinema were on board. The idea that the Biden administration is saying, trying to take credit for deficits coming down, they wanted to increase them by $5 trillion, and they couldn't. They couldn't pass the bill. Yeah. That's how big those tax increases were. It didn't happen. Okay, got it. David, stay there. You are blessed with being with me for the hour. Yes, I am. <laughs> Lucky guy. Yes. <laughs> Look at this video. A group of teens ransacked a Chinese restaurant in New York City. How will we ever get businesses to come back to this city? That's why the cost of that is more than $20,000, because it doesn't price in all the preparations people have to make, new insurance pricing, the fear factor. We can't be a society that stands for barbarism. For that kind of behavior, there needs to be the full extent of the law. I hope every one of those people faces jail Where time. Where are the parents, too? Oh, yeah, well, I hope the parents face jail time.
It has to be said. We have to be able to openly discuss what went on. But no matter what caused it, yes. it's unacceptable. Absolutely. Well said, David. Silvergate Bank, owned by Silvergate Capital, shutting down. Let me bring uh, David into this. Why hasn't uh, Bitcoin, for example, sunk way below 20,000 bucks with all this pressure on it? Let's put it in perspective. At 21, 22,000 right now, it's down 70% from its high. It is right now down 12% from where it was when the Silvergate announcement came out. Correct. So even though it's up from that 16,000 where it was at the height of the whole FTX implosion, crypto has been utterly decimated. And most of these banks and exchanges that are connected to it are bankrupt and they are on their last breath. They're over. This is totally revealed what was pushing crypto up before was all of the hedging, leveraging, speculating, all the nonsense that was going on. That whole game is over. So whatever is going to move this big Ponzi scheme higher going forward is going to have to be people actually believing it and paying cash for it. I need dividend news. And David Bonson is the man to give it to me. He likes Gilead Sciences and MetLife. So let's deal with Gilead first. What do they pay? First of all, can I just say all this talk about Peloton and crypto and these things crashing really makes you appreciate dividend growth, doesn't it? Doesn't it just? OK, make your pitch. <laughs> Gilead is paying 3.75 uh, percent. More importantly, they've grown the dividend 7 percent per year for five years. And they're now way past that uh, covid treatment drug they had. They have a very diversified portfolio of wonderful treatments, especially in oncology. They're doing very well. OK, MetLife, what are they paying? They pay 3 percent. They've grown at 10 percent per year for a decade so you have big dividend growth and metlife i think ultimately benefits from higher interest rates it's a life insurance company they've done a very good job managing we're a big fan of metlife i was worried about the safety of the dividends going forward yes, you should you're telling me that gilead and metlife you're, de you're safe with those dividends less than half of their cash flow is used for the dividend they have more than double coverage to co protect that dividend okay i'll take it you yes, thank you here's a question how much do taxpayers have to spend per year on illegals. Uh, do you want to know? I, I do. $182 billion a year. You want to comment on this, Bonson? I don't think it was ever really about immigration. I think the problem was, unlike Ellis Island immigration, unlike when you came in our country, you, there was patriotism. People learned the English language, and they really cared about our values. Our problem and why people have soured on the whole subject is that they came uh, so, so often. There's people here for a welfare state, and then we're not expecting people to assimilate and become part of the American culture. Mm -hmm. And I think that multiculturalism became a bigger problem than real immigration. Got it. David, thank you.